Hello, it is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday crossword today, which means we're going to be solving a relatively approachable early week themed crossword. And this uh, relatively approachable early week themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Henrik Koskinen, David Innes, Josh Lucas, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they keep this channel going through their direct support. And I really do appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to support the channel like those four do, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There you will find all of the bonus videos available to patrons as well as for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug. And thank you so much if you're among that group. I really do appreciate it. And um, thanks to those four in particular today. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you can subscribe on YouTube. That's free, of course, and very appreciated. And consider commenting on the videos, liking them, and so on. Those things all do help out. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join to converse with other members of that friendly chat community. There's a link in the description field. All right, let's get on to today's crossword, this Tuesday puzzle by Patrick Mayer, who uh, I think this might be a debut construction. Um, so welcome to him if so, and edited as always by Will Shorts. Let's start solving and see, see how we do. A wing for a prayer. Okay. So I think this is playing on the phrase oh, a wing and a prayer, but it's maybe a wing for a prayer. It's a it's a sort of architectural section of a church, probably. A wing for a prayer, someone who prays. Um certainly the most commonly clued church component, I, I would say, is probably the apps. So let's just try that and see if we can confirm it. Uh, blank amas amat, right, amo amas amat, there we go, some Latin conjugation uh, for us, which is, again, relatively recognizable in a context, in the context of the crossword, even for those of us who have not studied Latin, which I have not. Okay, pestilence. I don't know, plague, a pain, um, pestilence. I'm not sure. Base for tofu and tempest, soy. So these are uh, non-animal protein sources. And then soda fountain treat that contains neither of the ingredients in its name. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, pioneering synthesizer brand. This will be Moog, which, um, uh, which is named for its uh, founder and uh, is associated with some really very distinctive uh, sort of early synthesizer sounds. Some of my favorite of those are uh, Wendy Carlos and her Switched On Bach album, which is annoyingly difficult to listen to online, um, but it's great. Anyway, pestilence. Uh, oh, pox, as in a pox on, on both your houses, a pestilence. There we go. Okay, so breathing aid demonstrated by a flight attendant. Right, okay, this would be an oxygen mask on an aircraft, and this is somehow related to the theme. We don't yet know how, but I finding it hard not to look at this highlighted yellow revealer, I would think this probably is, which reads principles for good prose in a classic writing guide by Strunk and White. So Strunk and White, that's that's a classic uh, English language usage guide. Or a hint to the wardrobe assembled at 1725, 47 and 57 across. I don't know. Interesting. Hint to the wardrobe. Will it be a scuba outfit or something? I'm just trying to think, what would an Oscar, what sort of wardrobe would an ox oxygen mask be part of? I don't know. Okay. Oh, egg cream. Egg cream. I've never had an egg cream, but I've heard the name and I guess it must involve neither egg nor cream. That's pretty surprising. Uh, but there we go. Okay. Title Bond villain, Dr. No, of course, famous uh, titular Bond villain. And then actor Malcolm Jamal Warner, I think, did he play Steve Urkel in Family Matters? I think that that might be who that is. I hope I'm not misremembering. Club gig with pre-recorded tracks informally. A DJ set. So pre-recorded in the sense that a DJ is playing existing music rather than performing uh, an instrument or something. Um, although I'm sure there are those who consider the turntables as such, but that I think we all know what, I'm, what I mean. Anyway, plumber's drain clearing device. A snake, a big long metal snake that plumbers use to clear clogs. 
Flying Saucer Crew, for short, ETs, Extraterrestrials. And then Cluck of Disapproval. Uh, here we go. It's a New York Times classic. I don't remember this in the past being as much of a crossword standby, but boy, in the last couple of years of doing the series, I've certainly noticed it quite often. It's tisk or tsk, tsk, that kind of sound. Okay, tirades are rants. You might rant at somebody, dress them down. And then camouflage, uh, to camouflage something is to cloak it. And then a fraternal order, the fraternal order of the Elks. This is one of those, I don't really know how you describe this, a kind of civic organization or, yeah, a club, I guess. There we go. But that's what it is. Pool swindler, a shark as in a pool shark, someone who, uh, I guess, what, what do they usually do? They usually appear to be not very competent and it turns out they're an extraordinary player. Uh, knight's mount would be a steed, so a knight rides, a, the gallant knight rides a steed. And then greetings could be hi, hiya or something? Not sure. Mother Teresa, probably. There we go. Greetings. Hey, yo, hey, hey, yeah, something like that. Uh, no, <laughs> it's just hello. Okay, sorry. I was I was trying to think of something less obvious, but I didn't think of, I just should have thought of the obvious thing. Because here's Jazz's Fitzgerald, Ella Fitzgerald. There we go, very straightforward. And then French setting for many uh, Van Goghs or Van Goghs or Van Gogh or Van Gogh, however you choose to pronounce his name. Um, Arl, anyway, he was very associated with Arl. This is on my mind because I just listened to a recent episode of In Our Time, which I've mentioned on this show before, but it is one of my absolute favorite audio programs. Um, and you can download it as a podcast. And there was an episode on just this artist and Arl was, uh, was a significant part of it. Anyway, principles for good prose in a classic writing guide by Stroud. Okay, right. So element. Oh, Elements of Style. That's the name of the that's the name of the book. Elements and, and Style by Strunk and White. It's often referred to as Strunk and White by reference to its authors, but the actual name of the book is The Elements of Style. Okay, there we go. Doesn't really help me with <laughs> figuring out what kind of wardrobe an oxygen mask is part of. Uh, but we'll we'll get back to it. Okay. Like most holidays and physicals, annual holiday or annual physical. Specialist in PC problem solving. So uh, this is PC in the sense of personal computer. So probably an IT pro, maybe specialist. So professional. And then playfully bites is nips at like a dog might. Bad match on Tinder question mark. So you might read this and think it's referring to Tinder, the dating app, but I don't think so because it's not capitalized. And so it's not a proper noun. So it's bad match on lighting wood. Bad match on, oh, arson, right. So a bad way to put a, mat, a lit match to Tinder, a bad way to do that would be to commit arson, would be to uh, do it in with malicious intent. Okay, protective, protective drape for an x-ray. Oh, a lead, a lead shield or a lead apron, maybe? Um, mask apron. Maybe it's not the first part. Maybe... Maybe we're ignoring oxygen and lead and so on. But anyway, yeah, you wear a lead apron to get an x-ray to protect you from the radiation. Um, overwhelm with noise to drown out, to deafen, to deafen somebody would be to overwhelm them with noise. Okay, tenant's payment is the rent, of course, someone who rents an apartment or flat. Uh, culottes or corduroys, these are examples of trousers or, or pants in this case. To irritate is to hmm, not sure. Tolerate is to I don't know this either. What about this hay collecting machine? A baler. So farm equipment. It it collects hay and makes bales. I think that's probably right. Congratula uh, congratulatory sounding letter in the NATO alphabet. Um, I don't know. Um, is, is, why isn't Yahoo, is it? I don't think that's correct. What is why? Yukon or something? Boy, I should learn this def definitively. Uh, what about this? Wambach with a 2016 SB Icon Award. Abby Wambach, is she a, a footballer, a soccer player? That sounds familiar. 
Oh, bravo. Oh, yeah, bravo is congratulatory sounding. There we go. You say that to someone for a job well done. Okay, so that makes me think Abby might be right. I certainly recognize the name, at least. Tolerate is to... I still can't see it. Oh, accept. To accept something is to tolerate it. There we go. And then to give a hoot is to care about something. A chowder morsel could be clam from clam chowder, of course. Na oh, neighbor of Oman is Yemen. Did I read that? I can't remember. And then to irrit it, irritate someone is to peeve them, to annoy them. Dit's counterpoint in Morse code. So the dit, the, the sounds in Morse code, they're the you know patterns you type out are delineated in dits and daws. There we go. Uh, if a fire, for instance, is going out as embers might, it is dying, or they are dying. And then ease as worries is to allay. If you allay one's worries or one's fears, you you ease them, you allay them. Actress Mirren, Helen Mirren, famous, famous actor, of course. And then tumbling spot for Jack and Jill, the hill. Jack and Jill went up the hill and to fetch a pail of water. How does it go? We fell down the hill and I spilled the water. I can't, boy, I, it's funny how there must have been some point in my life when I forgot that. Um, and now I'm conscious that that happened. <laughs> Certainly would have known it when I was young. Anyway, hip hop dance move of the 2010th. Nay, nay, I remember this existing. Is it you shake your head or something? I don't remember how it goes exactly. But anyway, I remember it existing. Poe poem with the line, how they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Um... I'm not sure. What about this? Delivery person for short. So this looks like delivery of a of a child. So an OBGYN, obstetrician gynecologist. Okay. Uh, Isao of Golf. Oh, okay. This is a name I, I think I know purely from the crossword, but I think it's Aoki. I think that is the name of this golfer, but let's check the crosses and see. Cut from the, yes, if, if one is cut from the same cloth as someone else, one is alike them. And then, or, or rather, you wouldn't say that. You'd say the two people are alike. They're cut from the same cloth. That's a more accurate way of using that word. Uh, anyway, Poe poem. Boy, I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe I'll recognize it. Maybe I won't. We'll have to find out. Game show co-host could be called, who could be called a woman of letters familiarly. Oh, this will be, is it Vanna White? from Wheel of Fortune. I, she was the, or was or is, I'm not even sure, but uh, the one who would rotate the letters around on the big board. Okay, major league award for fielding prowess. Something, oh, a glove of some court, some sort, some sort of ceremonial glove, baseball glove. Uh, I, yeah, I think it probably is that, but I don't know what sort of glove it is. So what do we have here? We have a mask, apron, glove, apron. So it's a doctor, probably. They would be wearing a mask, gloves, an apron, maybe some sort of food prep person. Some wear gloves, some don't. I don't know. We'll keep going. Wolf-like, lupine. Oh, I have something wrong here. Oh, whoops, I misspelled deafen. That's embarrassing. I definitely, uh, I definitely know how deafen is spelled, but I did not type it properly. I've been doing that a lot recently. I don't remember that being as much of a problem in the past, but in the last, I don't know, year, I feel I've been committing many more typos than I, than I once did in the crossword. Anyway, a mournful verse could be an elegy, so uh, in honor of someone who has, who has passed away, for instance. And then first, second, third, or reverse could be a gear in a car. Okay, right. Don't know what kind of glove this is, but Polish city by the sea, Gdansk. There we go. So what is this? Lead glove? I don't know why that would be the case. We've already used lead in the grid, so that won't be. Decorative woodwork technique. Inlay. Uh, wooden inlay, you know, common sort of impressive looking woodwork technique. And then colossal is giant, probably. Oh, gold glove. Oh, that would be, that was probably the most obvious <laughs> material material I could have imagined for an award. Probably should have guessed that. Didn't seem to. How a ballerina pirouettes on toe. There we go. And then camelid, sometimes used to guard sheep, a llama. There we go. So relative of the camel and used as sheep guarding in, I don't know, Peru, maybe. Blank all-time high, uh, at an all-time high. 
Here we have tasty treats and meme speak. <laughs> meme speak. Uh, so that's noms in the sense that, you know, I mean, I think this is actually, there was something in here. Yeah, Nene was referencing the 2010s. I sort of feel as though nom and noms and nom nom is also kind of more of a an artifact of the 2010s than, than today, but that I, I don't see it as much, but maybe you do. Uh, weather resistant wood is teak. Yeah, you do often hear about decks and so on made out of teak, that kind of thing. Okay, small and pixie-ish. So you could describe someone as elfin if they're sort of lithe and small and have a whatever, however you would define a pixie-ish visage. Uh, anyway, spec, uh, not one spec, not one iota, a very small part of something. And headgear designed to block psychic intrusions, right? A tin foil hat. So what do we have? Mask, apron, glove, hat. I don't know. Maybe it is the chef. Okay, take responsibility for something to own it. And then Polynesian Disney heroine, uh, Moana, surely. Okay, so then Iwo Jima. There we go. I think Iwo Jima was on the crossword within the last few days, surprisingly. And then here we have one repeated, a kind of drum, so tom-tom drum and a drum set, the ones that are more pitched. Uh, to use a pogo stick would be to hop around. To ripen nicely as wine would be for the wine to age. Uh, to haul something would be to tow it behind you, say. And then a red and white target for, or for target, is there, oh, right, so this is the, the chain store's logo is a red and white target graphic. And then to eject with force is to spew something. And finally, oh, the bells is the Pope poem. Okay, I don't know if I've read that. I, I've heard the title, I'm sure, but, um, and I, maybe I have encountered it, but I can't recall. Anyway, there we go. So what am I missing here? <laughs> Principles for good prose, elements of style, or a hint to the, oh, oh, I see. Okay, it's not that we're necessarily knowing whose wardrobe this is. It's just that we have elements from the periodic table before, you know, articles of clothing, things you might wear in a war, you know, or have in a wardrobe. So oxygen, lead, gold, and tin foil. Well, tin. Oh, that's funny. So tin is the element, which I guess makes foil hat the, the clothing. I assume tin foil itself is not an element, so foil hat. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think this is describing any particular person, which is what I thought it was going to be. It's just the four elements and then the four articles of clothing of some sort. Um, I think that's probably what's going on. Uh, if you have found something more specific that this means, do let me know in the comments. I'm, I am curious. Um, but as far as I can tell, I think that's what it is. It's that we've, we've assembled a series of phrases that involve both elements from the periodic table and uh, articles of clothing or accessories. And and those are our elements of style. And there we have it. I think that's it. Referencing a classic work of English language usage reference. And like I say, do write me in the comments if you found something, something else to it. And speaking of that, let's look at a few clues from yesterday's crossword from those very comments. Uh, we just have two, I think. So Stephen Giblin explains, Turkey Bowl does not refer to a specific American football game, but rather is used generically to refer to a game played by a group of family members, friends, or neighbors on Thanksgiving morning. It might also refer to a game played between two rival schools. Finally, both the Detroit Lions and Dallas Cowboys traditionally play games on Thanksgiving that might be referred to as Turkey Bowls. Thanks. That was a perfectly useful and concise explanation. Thank you. Uh, James Dickey replies to my musing about IQ and my acknowledgement that I don't really know what makes a good or bad IQ score. And he explains, and this makes sense, I suppose, an average IQ is 100. So the farther the IQ score is above or below 100, the more you tail off the bell-shaped curve. That makes sense. It's just normalized around that that uh, that that number as mathematical comparisons often are. Uh, so there we go. Those were a few comments from a couple of comments from yesterday's puzzle. That makes for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with the Wednesday crossword, midweek, mid difficulty themed. Do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.